Hello and welcome back to a Minecraft Odyssey. Hope you guys are ready to enjoy some amplified survival Minecraft. <laughs> check check out this uh, wall behind me. Oh, it just went away. Um, I was just getting ready to go into F5 mode to uh, to do the introduction, and we got this weird uh, visual. Oh, it's not coming back now. We got this weird visual thing going on where the wall just kind of disappears. It's like there's some giant movie screen behind me or something. Pretty cool looking. Um, anyways, oh, get back into that mode. Nope, nope, that one. Yeah, oh, well, well, that's weird. You can see it forward, too. We got the sun in the back. And yeah, wait, wait. There's the sun going down in the back. Moon coming up in the front. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but it's kind of cool. Uh, getting back into our normal mode here, though. Uh, take a look at this. We got another villager. So we've made up for the one that uh, disappeared last time. Uh, it was actually really easy, because now, um, whenever the sun goes down, every zombie in freaking everywhere comes here. I'll come here at some time in the middle of the night and there'll be like five, six, seven zombies just standing right here. So it wasn't that difficult to find a, a zombie villager. The zombie villager came to me. Um, as for the, uh, the zombie sweeper mob farm, I have not dug the gravity drop yet or anything like that. Um, I've been working on that thing a lot lately and I kind of feel like doing something else. Uh, so we'll finish that up some other time. It's still producing pretty good even though it's not done. Like we've already got a chest full of items. Uh, but I want to uh, show you some stuff we got changed up here. Um, I think what we need to do uh, at the start of this episode is we need to light up a bunch of those overhangs and stuff. I got a bunch of shadowy areas around here where mobs are still spawning in the daytime. And we need to light that stuff up. Uh, but first, if we take a look over here, we have changed things a little bit. So I have a, uh, an infinite water source here. So now we can, uh, you know, fill up our water bottles and stuff. Pretty cool looking. Uh, just an easy little design. And we've got an inner chest. And I've uh, moved all our, uh, all our uh, good stuff into the inner chest. Um, and I also wanted to sh uh, tell you guys that this golden apple right here, I forgot to tell you last episode, uh, but we found a golden apple in our first episode of this series. And I didn't use that, ap uh, that apple. I didn't feed it to the zombie villagers. This is actually it right here. So I've held on to it. I'd never really thought about it, but uh, I think it might have even been the first chest we ever found in this world. We found a golden apple, which was crazy. Um, if that's not a good omen, I don't know what, what is. I remember I was so excited about an Efficiency 4 book uh, that I didn't even notice it. Uh, but I've made us uh, 16 Eyes of Ender here for going and finding the Stronghold uh, and coming up here pretty soon. And I think what we're going to do with the rest of the Ender Pearls is um, we have... Like I said earlier, we have these shadowy areas up here that need to be lit up. And I think we should be fine. I think 16 ender eyes of ender will be enough, hopefully, uh, to find the stronghold. I don't, wouldn't want to run out there, but uh, I've got a whole bunch of torches here. And we need to get a few of these areas lit up starting out here. Um, yeah, so this would be like the first ender pearl I've used in the game. This is crazy. Oh, by the way, Cowbutt's still there. <laughs> hey, Cowbutt. Uh, yeah, I'm, let's see if I can get it right on the first try. First ender pearl of the game. Woohoo! <laughs> we got it. So we're going to light up this area. There's This is a... Oh, the enderman damage. Look at the enderman. Yeah, so this is a big mob spawning area up here in these shadowy parts. Uh, once we get this lit up and a few other areas, it should really help. Get out of here. It should really... Oh, get over here. Look at that enderman. Give me your ender pearl. Come here. Yes. All right. So let's light this up over here. I really want to do some building of stuff up here, but I've been trying to hold off on the building until we get some more automated things going, because uh, we we're in such a need of so many resources and stuff. Um, should we go over there? I think I can make it over there without using the ender pearls. Uh, yeah, we're in such need of uh, so many resources. I've been trying to hold off on building, uh, but I think we may actually build something today because I'm, I'm in the mood. Is that dark up? Yeah, it is. Let's get up there. Yep, look at all those mobs. Uh, ooh, watch out. Oh man, this is a cool place up here. We're like up in the top of the trees on a big ridge line. Ooh, this is awesome. Future building, building spots for sure. Oh, we need to get that area down there. Okay, uh, let's see if we can get down there without dying. Get the sword ready. Oh no, I went too far. Dang it. 
<laughs> oh, that was a waste of interval. Okay, let me get back up there. Uh, 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 oh my gosh! Oh, oh! I was not prepared for that. Oh, oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. Don't die up here. Please don't die. I hear you, skeleton. Stay away. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe I survived that. Okay. Um, let me put my armor back on. That would be intelligent. We're just going to hang out here for a little bit. That was like, uh, yeah, there was a creeper skeleton party up here that I was not prepared for. This is why we are lighting this area up. Because that's how many mobs are up here. Spawned all the time. Uh, they, this needs to be lit up very badly. Let me do some repair here. Some dirt blocks. Ooh. But as I've been walking around this thing, just check out how cool this this mountain is right here. It's got all these little different levels where we could build things on. Like it's got a level right there. It's got a level right here. It's got more levels up there. And we can have a multi-level structure on this thing sometime in the future. I think it'll look really cool. All right, so the shadows on this place is for the most part lit up. Let's go ahead and get down from here because there's another place that we need to light up. Let me write that down. Yeah. Um, there is a huge surface level cave right over there, really close to where our uh, our base is, our spawn is. Oh, no, this is... Eh, that was probably a bad idea. <laughs> that could have That could have ended worse. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, there's this huge cave over here. Is that going to wash out a bunch of my torches? Nah, not really. Um, and it's really close to the spawn area. And I wish I would have known about it beforehand, because we, we may have actually had made this our main base. It's right... Right here. So, if I go down... Go down here. And our base, where we're doing everything at, is just over there on the other side of that hill. If we go down there and check this out... Let me eat something first. It's a huge open area down here. Let's ride that down. Get the torches ready. There's probably going to be a ton of mobs. I can't see. Yeah, look at this place, man. This place is awesome. I, w I wish I would have known this was here. Uh, when we first went into the world. Look at all the Enderman damage. Yeah, you want to you wanna know that mobs have been spawning here? Check out that Enderman damage. That's crazy. So this is definitely going to help the rates in the farm. Getting this thing all lit up. Oh, get back. But a really cool area. I mean, we're still going to uh, build something here. It's not going to be like our main storage area or like the main part of our base. But eventually when we expand far enough, um, we're going to come to this underground area here and do something. I'm, I'm thinking like maybe a botanical... Um, no, no, no. Um, freaking no, don't kill me down here. Skeletons are relentless, man. Okay, now that uh, we got this place lit up, I'm not constantly running for mobs. Maybe I could talk without uh, being interrupted. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool area, and it's only like 50 blocks away from spawn. I didn't even know it was here until I was looking for, uh, I was looking for caves the other day. And uh, it's got a really cool opening here on the other side. Ooh. Comes out to like a really cool overhang. Waterfall and stuff and trees and there's another area up there uh, that I can't quite get to right now uh, But there's one other cave that we need to light up. So uh, let's get back over to spawn and I'll show you where that one is All right now this last place we've actually seen before when we came up here exploring um, Looking for a taiga tree, you know get some spruce wood uh, But just to show you where we're at that's where the base is right down there There's a little wheat field and there's the, uh, the enchanting area and everything uh, pretty cool. This area might actually be too far away to affect the mob farm, but I figured we should light it up anyways. Um, but just take another look at this mountain right here. It's got like a spiral landmass that just weaves its way around all the way up. Whenever we do build something on that thing, it's going to look really cool. Um, and there's that, uh, there's that floating island over there. So we have come adventuring this way before. Um, and the little, uh, well it's not really that little, it's pretty big. The cave is over here, if I could sprint. Um, and I think, what did we call it? We called it like the, the cave of the pool of tears or something. It's got this little waterfall that comes down. And it's got like a skylight. Pretty cool. But obviously, there's lots of mobs spawning here. So, um, I don't know how well I'm going to do it talking during this little adventure. Because we may 
we're probably going to be running around quite a bit. Let's do the top first. I like lighting up the top part first, because then they don't drop down on top of you. Let's see if we can't make our way all the way over there. I've seen it from this angle. I haven't actually seen it up close yet. See how far it goes back. Okay, it doesn't go back very far. But still really cool. Come here. Eh, not too bad. Not as bad as the other cave. And I can already tell that there hasn't been that many mobs spawning here. Because there's no Enderman damage, right? Uh, like those other two places, there was obviously mobs spawning there all the time. Because just the, the obscene amount of, of Enderman damage. But this is a really cool area. Get back. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to look up that waterfall, see where the light source comes from. The mobs will stay away for a moment. Yeah, pretty cool. I love stuff like that, man. Like just skylights that go all the way up and waterfalls coming down. That's some cool stuff. That's why I love Amplified. I tell you, man, playing on Amplified is like I knew it was gonna be hard. Um before I, I tried it, I knew everything was gonna take a little bit longer. I just wasn't prepared for how much longer. I mean, everything takes like 10 times longer, but it's worth it because you get areas like this. Look at this. Look at this awesome place. We're obviously going to expand to this area some point in the future and build here. Um, and you just don't, you don't get stuff like this on default. This is why you play Amplified. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to light this place up. And then I don't think I'm going to build. Oh, look at the lone little cow. The lone little cow standing in the, in, in the light source. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, well, anyways, I'm going to light this place up. I don't think I'll be able to do it while talking. Just too much carnage. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll meet up with you again. Ha! All right, so we have got that stuff all lit up now. And if I open up F3 here, and you take a look at the entity count, there's only, was it one entity right now? Two, three, somewhere around there. And one of those is the cow. So uh, one of those is cow, but uh, usually when I would look up there, there'd be like 20 or 30 entities at all times. So now that we got that stuff all lit up, uh, that is going to help the farm quite a bit. And by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed earlier, but our scarecrow was gone. Um, there seems to be an issue with disappearing entities in Minecraft 1.8, so I've made a new one here. But uh, hopefully that doesn't happen too, too much, because it's kind of annoying to have that stuff disappear. Uh, but let's take a look down here, because I think I know what I want to do today. I want to build a furnace room. Aha! <laughs> um, and I have been... Oh, I, by the way, before I even get to talking about that, I added a, uh, a low fuel indicator to the uh, industrial smelter here, furnace array. Um, and if, let's see, how should we do this? I'll just pillar up. Um, and if we take a look back here, it's really simple. All it is is a comparator coming out of this first hopper. And uh, when this hopper runs out of fuel, that will let this torch come on, which will light up that, uh, that lamp right there and let us know that we have a low fuel. And even though that hopper is empty, that doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have any fuel. Um, because keep in mind, we still have fuel in the furnace itself. So when that hopper runs out, we'll still have a full stack of fuel in the furnace. So it's just a neat little little indicator there. But yeah, like I was saying, um, I was messing around in creative mode the other day. I'm trying to come up with some cool looking stuff and I found a combination of materials that looks pretty cool. And this is it right here. So um, our main building materials are gonna be nether brick, uh, dark oak, and quartz. And then the accent materials are going to be stone bricks, cobblestone, and uh, spruce wood, and oak leaves. And I think it's going to look really cool. 
Um, but let's uh, let's see. What should I do first? Well, I guess we'll start with uh, putting out the pillars on this on this furnace right here. So I think we're gonna want a pillar. Let's see, coming in diagonal. Yeah, like right here. So let's just take that all the way up. No need to really measure it out. Ah, all right, and then I think we're gonna want a pillar right where this is, because we want to kind of separate the front of the furnace from the back of the furnace. So let me put one here as well. Ooh. All right. Um, what I need to do first here is I want to get um, all these open spaces uh, behind the furnace itself covered up with another brick. So let me do that first, and I'll be right back. All right, so I have gotten the furnace array all covered up, and I've done a little bit more work as well. I just kind of got in a in a groove, fleshing out some ideas, and I like where we're going with this thing, man. It's uh, it's taking on a cool look. I'm going with like a uh, quartz chiseled quartz and half slab quartz trim in all four corners, and I'll use that to transition between the floor and the wall and the ceiling. I think that looks really cool. Um, and I've gone with this wall over here. I've used a uh, another brick backsplash on this side. And then in front of that, just put some detail. And this is what I like to do. I like to, uh, instead of build the whole wall at once, I like to focus on one segment and make it really detailed. And then I can repeat that segment over and over. I just find it works out better that way. So I, it's the way I like to do things. Um, and that's what I'm going with right now. I kind of like the, uh, you know, the dark oak, the leaves and everything. Um, one thing I do want to try is I, I think I want to go grab some uh, redstone lamps and put them under these bushes and above the bushes. I think that would be a good way of lighting the area up. Oh yeah, I like that. I like how you only see the top half or the bottom half of the, of the redstone lamp. It gives a cool effect. Um, yeah, it looks looks really good. It blends in really well. Um, what we should do now is let's do the ceiling. I want to do that first. Um, I'm thinking about doing. Let's see. I want to go up to a chocolate wood trim one level if I can hit it. And then from there, we'll go up another half block to a uh, another brick. So in the middle, we'll have another brick. And then we'll have like uh, uh, chocolate wood beams that go across. Um, so let me get all this up there. And then we'll see what that looks like. All right. So this is what it's looking like right now. Um, by the way, that lever right there is just temporary. I'm just kind of testing out what it would look like to put a lamp up in the ceiling. Uh, one thing I'm thinking about right now is that there might be a little bit too much nether brick. Um, although this wall right here might be throwing off my perspective. Uh, because when we get done with it, it's going to be all covered up like this one is over here. And we won't see very much of the nether brick. And if I move up so that that wall is out of my field of view, I don't quite get the feeling that there's too much nether brick anymore. I don't know. Let me know what you think um, in the comments. Uh, by, I'm thinking it's all right. Uh, one thing that I'm concerned with, though, is that I don't like how this isn't a square pad, right? So, like a lot of times when I like to put redstone lamps in the ceiling, uh, like a lot of other people, I generally use a like a 3x3 three three pad or a 5x5 five five pad uh, just because the, the redstone lamp itself is, symmet or is square. So having a square pad around it looks better than using a rectangle. And the way we have this laid out is... Uh, I was going to put a cross beam at where all these spruce logs are, but that creates a 7x5 rectangle. So mm, it's kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and mess with the ceiling and come up with a pattern that will give us a 5x5 uh, a five five pad around this, uh, around this redstone lamp. I think that might look a little bit better. Uh, so let me mess around with that and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I have come up with a bit of a plan here that will get things spaced a little bit more aesthetically. So at each of these uh, spruce beams here, instead of having a single cross beam, we'll have a 3x3 three three cross beam, uh, one on either side, and then in the middle, we'll have leaves hanging down. You have some bushes hanging down, and I think that'll look pretty cool. And if we have one of those at every cross beam, that will create a 5x5 five five pad in the middle. And I think it'll look a little bit better for the redstone lamp. Um, and what I want to do now is I'm going to head up there and we're going to put down some bushes and we're going to have some ambient lighting uh, behind the bushes, bushes, if I can speak, just to make it look a little bit cooler. Um, so something like that. And then we'll uh, throw some bushes down. 
um, and we'll make them hang down kind of naturally so we won't make it too uh, too flush. We'll have it hang down a little bit more on one side than another. Um, let me see, let's grab some more of those. Like maybe like that. Yeah, I like that. Maybe, let's see, let's have this one hang down one more too. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I like that. I'm liking the look of that. Um, and you know what? Now that we've got more uh, dark oak up at the ceiling and a few leaves as well, I don't feel like there's too much nether brick anymore. I kind of feel like there's an appropriate amount. Um, I think that's going to look pretty good. I'm liking it. Uh, uh oh, wait a second. Uh oh, wait a second. Something's not lining up here. What's going on? Something does not feel right. Uh, these corners don't line up. That's to the left. What is going on here? Oh, no. Why doesn't that line up? It's one block too far that direction. It should be another block in that direction. Did I not space this out properly? Here, wait, let me count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Half slab. Quartz block. Um, and why is that not lining up? Oh no, the furnace. It should have been one block longer in that direction. Because this is a seven block gap here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks between each log. And this is only one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no. I'm going to have to move the whole furnace one block in that direction to get that to line up. Can we just ignore it? I do not want to move that. Oh, I don't think I can ignore that. It's got to line up. Oh man. Ta da! <laughs> Oh, the magic of video editing. Yeah, so I got that all done. Um, it only took me like a half hour to move it over. Wasn't too too big of a of a hassle. Fortunately, this design is easy enough that it wasn't that difficult to do it again. Although it does look a lot more complicated now because it's so much thicker. It looks like we're hiding a bunch of redstone behind there, even though it's mostly just hollow space. Oh, look at all this redstone writing. Ah, so complicated. <laughs> yeah, but anyways... Uh, I did a little bit more, got things completed up a little bit here. Um, oh man, the, uh, the symmetry looks so much better. Uh, with a little bit of asymmetry in the bushes, you know, you don't want things to be too symmetric, otherwise it doesn't have very much character. You want just the right amount of asymmetry. Uh, but I, you know, I don't get too OCD, or I don't really get OCD about anything when it comes to placement and stuff, um, except for when it comes to patterns. You know, uh, for most things in the world, I actually like it to be kind of randomly placed and have sort of a natural feel to it. But if something has a specific pattern, I feel like it must line up. Like this ceiling, for example, has a very specific pattern. It's a three wide cross beam, five by five pad, three wide cross beam, five by five pad. And I feel like anytime you have a strict pattern like that, it, it must, it must line up. Uh, yeah, but so it's looking good now. I've also added a couple more little details. So I got these uh, these oak half slabs up there, just to sort of sort of uh, stitch the two sides together, which is looking pretty good. I love little details like that. Little details like that just tend to add a lot of characters to the design. I've also got some uh, some trap doors up above these chests. Um, I was going to put a fourth chest there, but it wouldn't be functional because we have a full block above it, so you wouldn't be able to open it. So I just through some uh, some trap doors up there. Um, I'm also trying to figure out if I like this better. So yeah, I'm, I still haven't figured out if I like the tall the tall spruce beam better or the short one. Um, I think I'm thinking structurally speaking, this one probably makes more sense because it looks a little more supportive. But aesthetically speaking, this one over here might actually look better. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. Which one you like better, the uh, the tall or the short? I still haven't decided that. Um, but yeah, what we need to do now... Oh man, that's looking good. <laughs> I like, I'm liking the way that's coming out. Um, yeah, anyways, what we need to do now is let's throw down a floor. Um, and I am thinking that we are going to... Oh, look at all this junk I got in here. By the way, I got this, uh, this nether rack. I was going to throw in here just to make sure this is working properly. I haven't tested it yet. Um, I got all the fuel distributed. Uh, but this seems to be working fine. Same number of items in each of them. Yep. 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 And they're coming into the output chest. Yeah, okay, so everything seems to be working fine. Okay, so when it comes to the floor, 
um, what I want to do is I want to try throwing down a random pattern of these three materials here. Uh, cobblestone slabs, nether brick slabs, and stone brick slabs. And then we'll just see how that all looks. And what I'm going to try and do here is just place blocks without thinking about it. Um, I find if you try to forcibly make a random pattern, it doesn't really look random. So I'm just going to like not think about it. La di da di da. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. It's going to be random. Uh, yeah, so let's see how this comes out. And let me get this floor done. Oh man, guys, this is looking good. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you have a, an image in your head and then when you build it, it just doesn't come out as good as you thought it would. But then there's those times where it actually comes out better than you thought it would. And this is one of those times. Uh, this is looking really cool. I was kind of hesitant about putting the nether brick in the floor because I thought maybe we had a little too much of it, but I don't, I don't think so. I think it's, it's pretty good. I think it all goes together really well. Um, I know a lot of people, it's kind of funny. This, this is supposed to be our furnace room. It's got this really leafy green look to it. And most people, when they do a furnace room, it's very industrial looking like there's lava and metal and stone, but eh, whatever. I mean, at least we got nether brick. I, nether brick is fairly industrial. Um, although we do have logs next to the furnace, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hey, it's Minecraft. Um, oh, by the way, I wanted to talk about uh, these dark oak parts here. You know, they don't really serve any function. They're just decoration. Um, why I have them there. I like to do this sort of thing uh, when I'm doing like an expandable design. Uh, I like to put these sort of decorative placeholders. So that way, like later on, if you come back and you want to you wanna put something here, you can just remove it. So let's say, for example, I want to put an interpol station here. So I just remove it and put an interpol station. And you don't really have to think about it. Um, and so, or maybe I'll decide I need more storage, so I'll put some chests there or something. But it just makes it very easy to expand the design when you use these sort of decorative things. So that's why I, I do that. I'm sure some people would comment like, oh, why don't you put more chests there? I don't know. Maybe I will um, if I ever need it. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the quartz. I'm really digging this quartz trim look, like having it in all four corners. I might... Uh, I end up using this throughout the whole base, like making it the theme of the base. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, not a whole lot of quartz. I know people tend to go crazy with the quartz, but just using this sort of uh, chiseled quartz and quartz half slab trim in all four corners, uh, I think it looks really good. It does a good job of separating the ceiling and the walls and the floor. Uh, yeah, so but I think I think we're about done for this episode. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, really happy with the way this came out. Um, all that's left really is for me to expand it and finish everything up. There are still a few things I'm not really sure about, like what we're going to do out here, because um, we go into this open area here, and I haven't really decided what to do. I don't, I don't really want to just make the hallway um, and then close everything up. I'm thinking about maybe putting in some sort of sky light access thing here, having it open up to the air somehow, but I haven't really figured out how to do that. So I'm still trying to come up with something to do on this side, so we'll see. And same thing over here, because this goes into the open, um, comes out over here by this lava. And I think what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm just gonna expand it out and then cover it all up with dirt, because this area right here, um, I kind of want to flatten it out a little bit anyways, because I don't, I don't really have a use for this area. So, but that area over there, I'm thinking about somehow having it open to the outside, and then having like a pathway that goes to this canyon, because this is a pretty cool little canyon over here. I was imagining having like some winding wooden pathway and then like next to a little stream or something. I don't know. Just thinking up stuff. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, it's nice to actually start building stuff. You know, we finally finally got some, some stuff coming into the world here, actually building a base. I felt like it was going to be forever, man. But uh, yeah, so it's cool to see some stuff coming together, finally have some things built. Uh, anyways, hope you guys liked the episode. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.